Hello there. Welcome to this video. Today we are going to be looking at the orchestrations for Angelus the Faceless Vampire. We are going to be taking a look at my process for orchestrations, how I take existing ideas and enlarge them into more grandiose ideas, and also how I add my own compositional ideas as well. If you have not checked out the song yet, there is a link in the description below where you can go check out the illustration video that accompanies the song. I encourage you to check it out before this demonstration so that way you can familiarize yourself with how the song works as a whole. Without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so here is the session for the orchestrations and also the vocal production was done in this session which we'll be getting to in a later video, by the way. So first, we're doing this demonstration with a bit of a twist. We have the actual album stems here, and we are going to be listening to the orchestrations uh, along with them today, just so we can kind of hear these orchestrations along with a more polished and finished sound. So we have your drums, bass, guitar, as you expect, we also have solos in terms of guitars and keys, and also post-production. So all of those are bounced out stems. In addition to that, we also have some processing on the master chain, providing a little bit of headroom so the mix doesn't clip, and also some mix bus compression, so that way we can hear it in a little bit more of a polished context, some extra transformers, and some width, a little bit of fake mastering here as well, the limiter and EQ. So that's a little bit about that. So here is the orchestrations. I like to organize my orchestrations in this order most of the time in terms of sections of the orchestra. So we got our strings here outlined in orange. We got our brass outlined in yellow, winds outlined in turquoise, percussion in blue in this case, piano in sort of a purple magenta color, and also choir, which is in purple. All of these are going to this master orchestral bus right here. And for the final mix, I wanted to keep things a little more simplistic, so we bounced out a final orchestral render of all of this onto one track, and we used a bit of EQ and automation to fit it into the final mix, and that was done out of simplicity. Maybe we will discuss that in another video. All right, let's get into it, shall we? So to familiarize ourselves with the track, let's hear a bit of the intro. So that's a bit of the intro. Let's kind of explain a bit of how I approach something like this. So first off, it's kind of listening to the ideas that were already provided. So for example, if we go back to these stems here, Mario sets up this introduction very nicely with this choir and drum intro. And then eventually we get a swell into the song. Already that drum rhythm is setting up the riff and also next riffs that we're about to hear. Now it goes into this. getting some variation on the riff. 
starts to variate even more. Okay, so that's the material for the introduction riff. We have a rhythmic idea, which was set up in the intro here. That idea is then expanded upon in the riff. That idea is now going to be variated upon in the next riff. And then it's going to be variated even further later on. And those are the ideas that are already there. So now we know what we are going to enlarge in the arrangement. And now we also kind of have an idea of what we can add to it. So very important to understand this is the ins and outs of what you're working with. This is what us orchestrators do. This is really the primary aspect of our work. So let's now listen to what I was able to gather from that initial idea and turn it into this. the next section for you in a second. This was my initial idea for enlarging those ideas that already existed and also adding my own melodic and compositional ideas as well. So first, let's dissect the string section. The strings are very simple. Not only is it mimicking the guitar riff, but it's also adding some melodic context. Take a listen. So it's adding a little bit more harmony. So for example, if I solo this guitar, what I'm adding that wasn't necessarily there in the guitar was this melodic lift. thought that reinforced this idea very, very well. So then when you play the guitars and the strings together, you get something like this. And I think this is where I started, if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I've looked at this, but what I think happens is that I tend to start with strings a lot because strings sound very nice in this genre. So I started with strings as the initial part of the arrangement and then I built upon it from there. So these strings are kind of enhancing that melodic character that this uh, rhythm guitar already has. This rhythm guitar has the melodic foundation almost. It's what sets up the idea for almost the entire song. It sets up one of the main uh, motifs. And so I'm trying to build upon that with little things like this, having the strings go up when the guitars don't, and reinforcing those melodic ideas. Let's look at the next part. We got some low strings. Simple sustains following what the rhythm guitar is doing, and it kind of adds a little bit of fullness to the entire uh, arrangement. Builds upon here.
Now let's hear what the next section sounds like. Okay, so here's where I start to enlarge the ideas and, and also add a bit more of my own ideas. So for example, what wasn't in the initial arrangement was these chromatic strings. And you'll notice that each top note of that chromatic scale always starts on the chord that is being given. So that idea I took from the initial arrangement. We also got our low strings again as well. So those were the strings for the intro, but obviously adding those strings was not enough. There's much more than that. So for this next section here, we added brass. It makes this section a lot more powerful. For example, if we didn't add it, adds a lot more aggression to those guitars. Also in the introduction, we have some winds. And I kind of wanted winds to be a little more prominent in this song than usual, especially during the uh, choruses, um, sometimes the verses, and also the intro. So let's just take a listen to the winds on their own. So those are Winston Solo. Let's hear what happens when we would take those out of this. As you can see, it kind of sounds a little empty without these winds. So if you were to unmute them now. Those low winds following the guitars are adding quite a bit. Here's where we start to reuse existing material. This is just the strings from earlier. You'll notice these ones here. We have that same idea. It starts with force, the voice rises, eventually the lower voice joins it, and then we have some following of the rhythm guitar afterward. Same idea here. We have our winds using this exact same set of notes and they are a doubling of one another. Orchestral doublings are very, very common, and it is something that we like to do a lot, and it basically just makes the arrangement sound thicker, and it's probably one of the most important techniques when it comes to making arrangements sound a lot larger, at least in my opinion. Let's hear those strings and winds together. <laughs> So 
So you know it's without the winds. It still sounds good, but the timbre just isn't as thick as I would want it. So if we add low winds, like clarinets, for example. It just sounds much more thicker, sounds much more enlarged, just sounds really nice. We also have some other doublings here. We have some uh, low winds here. We're talking like contra bassoon territory, and that is reinforcing this string idea here. You'll notice when I take it out, it doesn't sound as aggressive. Low strings sound very cool on their own, but I'd say winds have much more timbre when it comes to aggression. Hear how the crunch of that lower bassoon really adds to it. And same idea kind of over here. Just sounds a lot more thicker with those winds. Sounds much more characteristic. And then of course, an intro like this has to have some percussion, so I added some. We have some Grand Casas, which are bass drums. So kind of uh, something to take us into the song after this intro. And it's basically to reinforce uh, those swells into the song. We also have some over here. So again, here is where we're reusing material and expanding on it as well. This is the main rhythmic motif from earlier. But you'll notice that we have a bit of a twist, which is we added a triplet figure here. as well and then same idea with these lower drums and this is where the percussion starts to expand on those ideas and variate them so you'll notice that that may have sounded like a different idea, but it's actually a variation on the main rhythmic motif. And I think that's something that's important in songs. A lot of the great songs that are made use themes and variations. They like to take those ideas that are really cool and manipulate them in many ways as possible. And I think the same is true with orchestral arrangement here. There's a lot of ways that you can take such the simplest ideas and just weave them into something else completely so that's kind of what's happening here in general we also got these uh cool wind sounds we kind of got these uh savage winds as they're called and these are like phrases that go upwards Kind of like, uh, I think it's in scalier motion, I believe. I really liked uh, the dissonance that I created, and I love how interesting it was. Like, uh, just listen to how much it changes the character of this next section here. Let's 
hear that same section without those. It sounds almost completely different. Now if we add them in... really stick out and really kind of create this sense of tension almost like it's going somewhere and I really love what that did and let's listen also to how much the percussion adds here same with percussion same idea like we lost quite a bit there let's put it back in It's really that snare drum that adds quite a bit. And we also got some uh, Tiffany's as well playing those bass changes in the bass and the rhythm guitar. So that way we can kind of emphasize those notes a little bit more. We also have some crash cymbals to kind of emphasize uh, each section a little bit within this section. We also have some anvils. And then to transition into that next section, we also have more percussion, of course. And that's where the emphasis on the riff starts to happen. We had some emphasis on kind of a little bit of both of the orchestrations and the riff at the same time. And then now we have a pure focus on the riff here which is where the arrangement gets thinner. So let's go to the next section now. Here is the orchestral section in solo. So you'll notice with this section, it gets a lot more sparse, and there's a reason it gets very sparse. Let's listen to this part here, just the band. We got a busy riff here. I think we kind of want the orchestra to add more texture and fullness just to fill in the space without being distracting from the riff. Now let's hear this underneath the riff. So you'll notice that the orchestra sort of disappeared. So let's kind of hear this transition going into this part. just creating some space. So we got some con lanyo. So con lanyo is basically hitting the bow uh, on the opposite side using the wood. So just some textural details, a bit of a string melody. Again, 
It's expanding on that riff idea, but it's just hidden in the background. So in other words, this orchestra has gone from more frontal detail, in other words, in the forefront, to more sort of a middle ground detail, like in the part, like in the section before. And now it's gone completely background almost. It was definitely lowered so that the riff could stand out a bit. Brass is emphasizing that riff going upwards. So we're taking from the arrangement again. We also got these brass arcs creating some tension and also some textural detail. Yeah, there's not much going on in this section. It's pretty sparse and it's meant to be that way. Sometimes we have to know when to not do huge orchestral arrangements and let other parts of the mix stand out. So now that we've heard that section, let's hear how this transitions into the chorus. So that was quite a change there. So let's take a look at it. You'll notice now that the guitars go into the background now. The orchestration comes forward. And why is that? Because simply there's just more detail to listen for in the orchestrations. So here are the guitar, drums, and bass on their own. So the guitar takes more of a supporting role while still providing a strong uh, foundational idea. The bass takes on more of a prominent role. And same with the drums too, the drums kind of have the groove and the energy. Let's listen to the orchestra. So the orchestra basically got bigger, but it also got softer in tone as well. It got more ethereal. And the reason it got ethereal is because we're not using any brass or percussion. We're using some percussion, but we're only using a cymbal sustain to take us into the chorus. What takes prominence here is the strings, winds, piano, and choir. And these just have more ethereal qualities to them. Like it just sounds more like angelic, it sounds more soft in tone, and they're also playing softer. So here we have our full string arrangement, like so. This takes directly from the guitar chords. So if I was to solo out these MIDI notes, for example, You know, it's the exact same idea as the guitars. Now we're going to build upon that with some doublings and also some notes below. So this was more so the initial idea. We also got some uh, doublings uh, on the same notes, just with different samples. We now have this wind line, which was my own compositional idea that I wanted to add.
you'll notice that the chordal structure is following the exact same chordal structure as the guitars. With some slight variation. Then we also have this piano. Again, directly taken from the guitar support. Although instead, we have some accompaniment in some arpeggiated manner. Then we have choir. Same idea here. It is the same idea as the guitar riff. We are expanding by doubling voices below and also adding some voices in between to make it thicker. So then when you put it all together, you get this. So that is that section. Here now, we go to some type of post-chorus in this case. Now we get something like this. So we're expanding now on that chorus idea even further, using themes and variations. It first started off with the string line. This is where I start to add a little more of my own compositional ideas. I thought a counter melody would be a lot of fun here. And so using those ideas, which I think are the ideas that I started with, we came up with these other ideas. So for some texture, we added some string slides. some low strings for support. Which are just following the chordal structure of the guitar. We have brass that's doubling up the string melody we heard earlier. We also have some winds that are going along with the guitar riff. And we also have the piano melody. which is following this string line and also this string line as well from earlier. And we also have choir as well. Which are following the chordal structure of the chorus and together, we get this. So 
So one thing I'd like to emphasize is that a lot of these arrangements come from one simple idea. And you'll notice with a lot of these sections, most of them started with a simple idea. So if you're anyone who's trying to get into orchestration, know this concept very well. It all starts with an initial idea foundation. This section I was explaining this post chorus here all started with that initial string melody idea. Same with this chorus. It started with that initial idea in the guitars, the simple support, and I added to that arrangement and added my own ideas with the winds in this case. And same with the intro. It all started with that riff idea and it expanded into something bigger with some more textural colors and sometimes my own little ideas here and there. So everything has a foundation and a melody. And that's where you should usually start if you are trying to figure out arrangements for a song like this. So now let's go to this next, uh, I guess in this case, verse. Let's hear what's going on. So you'll notice brass takes prominence over the arrangement there. So now this is reinforcing the riff that is already there. So even though brass is the standout, we're enhancing those ideas. So this is the riff put in brass form with some extra harmony. And we let those brass go to that higher register to really emphasize the top notes of that riff, to really let it stand out, to basically be angry. But that's not all that's part of this arrangement. We also have strings. And that really reinforces the brass. So even though you can't necessarily hear them stick out, without them, the brass sounds a little thin. So here's one thing to know about uh, sections like this, is that even though you can't necessarily hear something, it's still going to contribute to that arrangement in some way. And this is a perfect example. Just gets much more thicker, gets much more powerful. Same with this percussion as well. So we got some, uh, what do we got here? We got some anvil strikes to emphasize each half of the section. I think these are tambourines. That's a, got some snare to emphasize each half. Some more snare. Timpani to emphasize the note changes. A bit of bass drum. And that probably adds quite a bit to this arrangement. It adds a lot of movement, it adds a lot of character, and this really reinforces the riff idea that is here, so without it... So it's going to really give that riff more depth and character. So here we have this riff from before come back, which is this one. So I had sort of the same arrangement come back as before with the addition of this. So 
So I wanted something different to happen during that part because, you know, we have heard that riff before. So I'm like, okay, how can I make this more interesting? So I thought, why not a flute solo? And let's face it, how many songs do you hear that have a flute solo in metal? Almost never. So I thought it was unique. I thought it was cool. So I rolled with it. This is roughly the same arrangement as before. So yeah, it's almost the same with the addition of this wind melody. So now, even though we have this nice wind melody, let's listen to it again. And I want you to listen to the second half when it repeats. So if you can hear that, you notice there are other instruments doubling up that wind part. So it's not just the flute solo. There's other things happening, so it can actually stick out. And even though we can't necessarily hear them, they're not in the forefront. They're contributing to the overall fullness of that solo. So first we have strings, which are doubling it. Then we have more winds in the second half doubling it again. And this just keeps the solo more interesting. It keeps it from staying stale, I guess. I really like doing this when there's something that repeats, but you kind of want it to feel like it's different the second time. It works almost always, and I love doing it, so it's cool. So this is just the chorus again. We have the exact same arrangement, and then we get to this next section, so I'll play the chorus in this next section for you. <laughs> So you'll notice that that was pretty much the exact same arrangement as the last post-chorus, but with a little bit of a twist. So let me play the orchestral arrangement. <laughs> Notice that the strings get higher and the piano gets higher, and we also have addition of winds. So again, theme and variations. Let's listen to that first post-chorus again in solo. <laughs> have a slightly lower arrangement here. Now what happens in this part? We have the strings join in earlier with that piano melody. We 
also have the addition of winds coming in in the second half, and the piano and strings get higher. <laughs> Winds. We have strings. So we have all three of those working together. And that way we create a post chorus that, that does pretty much the same thing, but it sounds interesting still it's different while still maintaining the exact same arrangement almost Let's dissect this secondary bridge section. So first it starts off by taking directly from the guitar with the strings. And we have some rolls into this highly chromatic string section. So we're taking ideas from the initial guitar arrangement. For example, the strings, brass, are reinforcing that initial guitar arrangement. So the guitar is doing power chords. So this would be, we're doing roughly the same thing. We have power chords in the brass, you have some octaves in the strings and some power chords in these upper strings. And that fills up the arrangement for this section. We have a bit of a hit in the Grand Casa. Some rolls. But the main uh, feature is this string line. And I thought this would be really cool to do because, again, guitar does have that initial idea that was used from the intro, but instead it's doing some slower, more like marsh-like type of uh, riffing, if that makes sense. Kind of sounds like it's marching almost. So I thought it would be cool to do a string line over top of this. And then once that's done its job, then we get to this. I basically wanted this to be a very heavy breakdown part because not only does the guitar get faster, it then gets into a breakdown afterwards. So we have the string still going. We have some string accompaniment. And we have a full blown brass arrangement, which is the main feature.
of course, we have to have the biggest percussion sound in the world. Basically, during that part, we're just using full percussion, pretty much everything that there is available. So I thought it sounded cool, like every single drum, timpani, snare, tambourine, anvil, bit of a clap, and used with like really heavy compression. This sounded really nice. So without the compression, it actually sounds quite different. Kind of sounds a little pokey, but with the compression. And I just really love what that does. So together leading up to that. So you notice it's still using the exact same material that was presented to us before, this main guitar riff. There's just so much you can do with that simple idea, and this is where theme and variations comes in very handy. And you can just constantly build upon and build upon it until you get to a point like this. Now we're into solo territory, but I still wanted the orchestrations to keep going because I really love when you have stuff that's still going underneath stuff that's the main focus i really love uh when i hear details like that so underneath the solo you hear this And that way it keeps some interest going while the solo is the main focus. And I added my own little line underneath. So it's almost the exact same chords as the chorus. And basically Mario is using that to do his solo. And essentially we are creating a different arrangement over top of those same exact chords with the exception of the last one in this section in this case. And I love how this still keeps interest while the solo is playing. Like let's just listen to it without and with. So that's really great already. And Mario also added a small bit of choir stuff underneath as accompaniment. So I wanted to take that as a little bit of a step further and sort of enhance this section with sort of a counter melody of strings, but stuff that's not too interfering with what he's doing. And then we 
get to my solo. I'll just play it through here. Same idea here. We're adding stuff underneath. The orchestra is still going, but the solo is the main focus. This is what's going on underneath my solo. So we have that same string motif from before, which is this. Which is mostly background material for the most part. We have some string sustains. which is a diminution of what we had before in Mario's solo, but it does get bigger later. And we have a bit more of an open sound here, and one thing I want to mention is that if you want your sound to be more open in your arrangements, you kind of want to space your notes out a bit more. You don't want them as like close together. So you'll notice that this is sort of close together, but stuff like this, like this top line, and also these chords down here are spaced out pretty heavily. So that's more of an open sound that I'm talking about. It kind of sounds a little bit wider and Bigger intervals tend to sound a lot wider in arrangements, and so if you're looking for a way to make your arrangements sound a lot, I guess, maybe wider, more open, then that's kind of the way to go. We also have the wind doubling from the line earlier. And the real star of the show, which comes out in the second half of this arrangement, is this choir. So it gets to the very highest point and some of the highest notes that us pranos can sing. So this is constantly building up underneath that solo. It's not just staying in one place and I really like when arrangements do that. So let's listen to it again and I want you to keep that in mind.
so it builds up to that point. It's always building. It's not staying in one place. And I can't say it enough. I just love when arrangements do that. I love when it's not always so obvious, but it's still building underneath. And uh, arrangements are so wonderful when it does that. So now let's take a look at the ending. And this is the same uh, riff repeated. And this is another one of those important climaxes in the song. So we want it to be very big. So here's the arrangement. brass and percussion as the focus and this was actually taken from an earlier part in the song which is this part obviously in this other part over here there is no higher riff part Again, theme and variations. The idea is repeated here. That's the main motif ending. So we got strings like this. some sustains as well. These are supposed to go together. And of course, the brass. And of course, percussion. Percussion is just really great for reinforcing uh, climatic moments like this, you know. And again, we got the anvils again, we got the snares, we got the Tiffany, we got the, I think toms, I believe it is, tom toms. And then we also got the crashes. And we also got this roll. That's how we end the song, and then afterwards we have some post-production to fade it out. All right, we made it through. Thank you to everyone who joined and watched this video. If you like this video, please consider giving it a like, leaving a comment, and also subscribing to our channel and also sharing it with your friends. I would love to see more people learning about this very subject. I hope this was very informative. We will be back with more of these videos, kind of explaining our production process and some other things about the process as well. And I hope to see you in another video. Hope you have a wonderful evening or day or wherever you are. <laughs> Take care, guys.